Today we are talking about none other than cortisol and how it might be preventing you from achieving your physique goals and sadly losing body fat as well as building muscle. In this video, I'm going through everything. We are going to look at cortisol's role in how it regulates and affects energy, performance, sleep, sex drive, and hunger signaling. And hopefully by the end of this video, you will have a better idea on how to manage it when it is a little too high and how to prevent it from impeding your physique goals. So cortisol is a glucocorticoid hormone. It's produced by the adrenals, which sit on top of the kidneys. Now, anytime you experience stress or even the perception of stress, your body signals to the adrenals to produce cortisol in order to cope. This is part of the HPA axis, so hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. So the hypothalamus senses stress and causes then the release of corticotropin releasing hormone. Now this is sent and received by the pituitary. Now the pituitary senses CRH and then causes the release of ACTH. ACTH is adrenocorticotropic hormone. This is then received by the adrenals, and in response to this, the adrenals produce cortisol. Now, cortisol's essential job is to mobilize energy, to free up fuel sources so that your body can then fight the perceived or real threat. So if you picture our ancestors, this threat was likely a predator of some sort or an environmental factor that was putting them in a life or death situation. Now, in today's world, that same threat could be a work deadline, it could be a bad workout, it could be a fight with your partner, or just looming anxiety. Now the real trouble starts when cortisol is chronically elevated. But before we define what that actually means, what chronic is as opposed to transient, let's first get into how does our body determine what is a stress and what isn't? So factors like mindset, past experiences, and genetics are going to dictate how your body physiologically responds to an immediate threat. And let me tell you, when your brain decides that something is stressful, it keeps that cortisol tab open. Now let's compare acute versus chronic stress. Cortisol spikes briefly, which is going to give you a boost of energy and keep you alert. In the short term, this can be beneficial. Now, cortisol naturally peaks in the morning, waking you up and helping you feel energized, but it does dip and taper off in the evening, letting you wind down. Now, what about chronic stress? So if life circumstances like work, relationship drama, intense training or poor sleep keep you stressed all day, cortisol stays high. This can lead to fatigue, muscle breakdown, dysregulated hunger signals, poor sleep, and this cycle can become very vicious. So how do we define chronic stress? It's not just a matter of feeling anxious and kind of going through this volatile pattern at certain points in the day. Chronic stress is when that stress reaction persists for weeks, months, and you can never really catch a break. You might feel constantly on edge or exhausted, which is a little bit of a vicious cycle in itself, especially if the stress in itself is causing worse sleep. Now, cortisol follows a circadian rhythm. It typically peaks in the morning and then falls again in the evening. This is why it can be important to test cortisol at multiple points in the day and specifically at night, if we're seeing that cortisol is still really elevated at a time that it shouldn't be, this could be leading to unfavorable physique outcomes, not to mention insomnia or restless nights. Now you're going to see variants depending on what lab you use and what the reference range they use at that specific lab. But generally, we want to see morning cortisol anywhere between 7 to 15, and I'll say even when doing research for this video, I saw levels up to 20 and 25, which realistically, if I have someone who is a non-competitor or a competitor who's in a non-prep state, if their AM cortisol is above 15, if we're starting to broach into that 18, 20, 25 range, this is definitely something I'm going to want to take a closer look at. Now we have to understand cortisol plays a very healthy part in our ability to perform and feel energized. A cortisol spike can sharpen focus and supply fast energy. And this is very much a healthy part of the fight or flight gear up. However, chronically elevated cortisol can put you in a position where you're more catabolic and can lead to fatigue and exhaustion and muscle loss. Now, as previously stated, cortisol is supposed to be high in the morning 
Whereas at night, we're supposed to see those levels taper off. Now, even just a single night of poor sleep can lead to more stress. This thereby can elevate cortisol levels the next day, which can also make sleep a challenge. Now, chronic stress can seriously disrupt the HPG access. Now, this is in both men and women. If your body is indicating that there's a threat nearby, it's not going to be able to calm down and activate the parasympathetic nervous system. So because your body is prioritizing stress and survival, it is overriding reproductive function. This can lead to a disruption in your menstrual cycle and in both genders can lead to a lower testosterone production. Now acutely, this can lead to a drop in libido. But long term, if cortisol levels are chronically elevated, this can even lead to fertility issues. Now, stress is going to have a very direct effect on two of the primary hunger hormones. We've got leptin and we've got ghrelin. Now, leptin might drop and ghrelin is likely going to rise, nudging you to want to eat higher fatty foods, saltier foods, and frankly, just comforting foods. And this is why individuals who are chronically stressed experience this dysregulation and hunger signaling. And ultimately, it makes it that much harder to be adherent and to prevent weight gain. Now, how do we discern a healthy amount of stress versus an unhealthy amount of stress? Let's talk hormesis. Hormesis is a concept where you can expose yourself to a mild or modest amount of stress and through this stress, it can actually trigger adaptation. In this sense, the stressor is actually beneficial to the entire organism. However, once stress is too large or too constant, you lose this hormetic beneficial effect and you start to slip into this chronically cortisol elevated state, which this is exactly where all of these negative consequences begin to appear. So really the key is finding a balance in the amount of stressor that you're exposing yourself to. So how do we go about keeping cortisol at a healthy target range? First and foremost, we have to prioritize sleep. And if that's something that is a little bit of a challenge for you, I encourage you to do whatever you need to do with your environment or with your schedule to at least get in seven to nine hours. Now, if you're experiencing chronically elevated cortisol levels and you're noticing that it's pretty hard for you to get more than six hours of total time spent asleep. This in itself is absolutely going to perpetuate higher cortisol. And personally, something that I've found to be beneficial is having a very consistent bedtime routine. Also making sure that I am absolutely giving myself at least nine hours to get in adequate rest in case it is a little bit challenging to fall asleep at first. I would also make sure that you are eliminating stimulants later in the afternoon if this is something that keeps you awake late into the evening. Now, another aspect to this is optimizing your training. You need to align the amount of volume that's in your program, the amount of workout days and rest days with what your recovery capacity is at this time. And this needs to be balanced with other stressors that you have in life. Now, you also have to consider how extreme diets and extreme deficits can raise cortisol levels. As much as you might want to see the scale weight go down, you have to be methodical with structuring your deficit in a way that doesn't leave you underfed. Eating too little can actually push your body to raise cortisol levels for energy. Now, sure, there are supplements both over the counter and prescription that can help manage these stress levels. But realistically, it's important that you have lifestyle modifications and non-pharmacological interventions that you can put in place if you're finding that it's a little difficult to manage your current stress load. And I really encourage clients, if you can get to the root of the issue, if you can find out what is driving this stress, like truly at the base, this is going to leave you empowered and hopefully give you clarity around what you need to do in order to mitigate or at the very least, reduce that stressor. And I know for type A individuals, it can be very alluring to continue to put more and more on your plate to spread yourself very thin, but there is a point where this is actually gonna hinder your performance and your physique outcomes. Cortisol by no means is an evil hormone or bad for us. It's just a matter of finding the balance that we can tolerate. And problems I see with individuals who are trying to lose fat or build muscle typically arise when they're stuck in these chronically elevated states of fight or flight. Now, short-term stress, it can be beneficial and it can drive adaptation. And we really have to consider this when we look at fatigue management, when we're broaching something like a contest prep or an extreme fat loss phase. Now, if you're finding that you are 100% adherent and you are in a big enough deficit, yet you're really struggling seeing the scale weight go down and body fat go down with it, 
it could be worth looking into total allostatic load. Where I would start is first auditing your sleep, your rest and recovery. Contrast this with your output and also consider whether or not you're in too big of a deficit. Even small improvements can make a big difference. And something that I encourage clients to do is segment out time to really get clear on where these stressors are coming from and how much control you have around modifying them. And it doesn't hurt to get lab work and get something objective in your hands to at least provide proof that maybe you're taking on a little bit too much. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments below. As always, I will see you in the next one.